Turning the Axis of the World is an exhibition that responds to our times. The idea for the exhibition and its title came about during a time when the whole world, Singapore included, was experiencing dramatic changes to the way we lived, worked and related to others, thanks to the pandemic and global lockdown. At the same time, scenes of unrest and violence exploded all over the media as communities protested to be heard and recognised and for injustices to be redressed. In general, there was a sense of anxiety and anger, but also a strong desire for change and rethinking the status quo. These unprecedented changes led me to think about turning points, which then led on to the idea of the world's axis being overturned or disrupted, suggesting a world out of joint, but also a desire to upend the established order of things. There are three sections to this exhibition, or what I have chosen to call turns. The first section in the central gallery is about histories and destiny. Works by Rikrit Tiravanija, Pinari Sampita, Chiu Zhujie and Din Kyu Lei suggest a world held in suspension. These works question the seemingly inexorable trajectory of personal as well as national histories, making space for new possibilities to emerge. The section opens with Pinari Sampita's floating vessels, her abstracted, amorphous forms are evocative of several things all at once mountain, umbrella, shelter, bull, breast and crater. They embody the shifting and fluid nature of symbols, matter and by extension of phenomenological understanding of the world. They suggest a whole sphere split into upper and lower halves or two halves waiting to be joined. In the suspended space in between, the possibilities are boundless. The notion of directed action in a moment of suspension and imminent change is also reflected in Chiu Zhijie's prints. These enigmatic images form part of his ambitious Nanjing Bridge project, which explores the idea of small interventions at the convergence of grand narratives and destiny. The Nanjing Bridge is a much vaunted national monument symbolizing the aspirations and achievements of the Mao Zedong era. It has, however, become a well-known suicide spot where the desperate and melancholy take their own lives. One of Chiu's artistic interventions entailed the artist's active involvement in suicide prevention efforts by posing seemingly irrelevant questions that would give the suicidal pause for thought, a critical moment of suspended action with the power to effect a change of course. Chiu's prints, rich in references to literary and philosophical traditions, map out ideas for the Nanjing Bridge project. Collectively, they also evoke a suspension between poles of human experience and emotion. Poised between death, despair and futility, and the renewal and imminent arrival of spring, Chu's evocative images interrupt the arc of history to give pause for thought and reflection and further posit a change of direction or destiny. In a similar vein, Ding Kyu Lei addresses the celebrated monuments of his native Cambodia which he invests with charged narratives that invite audiences to consider the shadow side of civilization's achievements. His powerful image suggests the collapse of a civilization and ghostly images of small shrines, obscure memorials to the victims of the Khmer Rouge's killing fields, punctuate a panoramic image of the grounds of Angkor Wat, the apogee of the Khmer Empire. This is a haunting that echoes the recent redressing of histories of violence invested in various statues and monuments around the world and urges us to think about how and why we remember. In the second section is a group of works that explore humankind's relationship with the natural world and, by extension, the cosmic order. From the spiral th axis of Thor's daughter and Wu's conceptual charting of the world to Ern Tang Wihaso's fluid and organic lines to the rumbling turbulence that erupts on the picture planes of Jason Martin's work these works collectively convey a sense of disquiet, but also a parallel process of adaptation and recovery. Ashley Bickerton and Hima Upadye's surrealistic landscapes conjure up visions of a world at once magical and enchanting, but also scorched and in decay. Concluding this section, a conciliatory note is sounded by Shirazi Hoshiari's fluid, shape-shifting panels, which suggest the movement of natural elements as well as the dissolution and unification of all matter into one, a collective inhale and exhale. The third and final section of the exhibition is animated by a spirit of iconoclasm and flux. 
The works here respond to the title in their elucidation of disordered worlds or a desire to don different lenses to view current realities. Manuel Ocampo's print signals an exuberant mashup, as well as a breakdown of established orders and hierarchies, while the works of Echo Nugroho and Harry Dono speak of a desire to transcend accepted or established worldviews by shifting perceptions and perspectives. Echo Nugroho's colourful paper masks, for example, may be read as a contemporary iteration of the magical costumes donned by shamans to commune with the spiritual realm, a potent talismanic shroud with which to shift realities and perceptions. Harry Dono's enigmatic Rongo Warsito perspective reinforces the notion that we now inhabit an age of madness, or what he calls Zaman Edan, while expressing a desire to transcend the noise and entrapment of false realities. Bracketing this section, the works of Suzanne Victor and Tepe Kaneuji collectively express a state of suspension and fluidity and imagine the coming into being of new forms and new worlds. Collectively, these works playfully suggest the idea of realities in flux, ready to be shuffled around and remade anew. Where and how will the pieces fall when the axis of the world turns?